Hey everyone, Mike with Price Plow here. I need to quickly show you this video about something that happened to me about a week ago. Uh, but before I show you this video, I want to make it abundantly clear that nothing in this video constitutes as medical advice and I am not a doctor. If you find yourself in a scary situation, then you need to seek immediate medical attention. This is just my story about what happened to me and how I handled it and how I'm going to handle it in the future. So let's roll the tape. Welcome to Price Plow. Okay, we're back for day two. Unfortunately, this is actually a few days later because we ran out of a couple strips and the hurricane caused uh, shipping delays. So back at it finally. Let's see where I start off at. Starting gluco. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't even know if this is real. This is This is not right. Should I do a second one? Still low on strips, it's a long story, but um, we need to check my ketones. I might need to go eat right away. This isn't how it's supposed to be, I don't think. But what about the ketones? You know what, I don't like this. We're gonna go eat. So there it was. I'm pretty sure you can see the exact split second when the sheer terror just comes over my eyes in that video. And so I want to talk about what I ended up doing, a few things that people had told me since then, and um, what I'm going to do in the future. And we're going to have to discuss two different studies here because they were very helpful in guiding me uh, through this process a little bit. So first things first, uh, immediately, like I said in the video, I, was like, I think I got to go eat. I went downstairs, ate a ton of fruit, and then a full meal, and then I retested my both my levels a few times. I got my blood sugar into the 60s and then into the 80s, and I got my ketones back down to 2.2. And so I felt I felt comfortable then, but the fact of the matter is that I felt fine the entire time, like absolutely fine. I felt great, in fact. And so of the people I, I contacted at first, the first person said, go eat now, and this was not a doctor, go eat now, and um, a second suggestion was go to the hospital. And so I didn't heed that warning because I also thought of the first study that we're going to discuss, which uh, centers around the GKI or glucose ketone index. Now I'm going to make a link to this, to the full text in the uh, description below, but basically this is a ratio between glucose and ketones. And it was developed by certain doctors who are fighting uh, certain forms of cancer with the keto diet alongside of traditional therapies such as chemotherapy and everything. And so we're not going to get fully into the details of that, but, but there are some arguments that cancer is more of a metabolic disease than a genetic disease. And so some of the doctors who believe cancer is more of a metabolic disease created this ketone index and this. And so I thought of that ketone index and I put my numbers in there and it turns out um, I was at 0.97, which is nearly right at the 1.0 level, which they consider to be true therapeutic ketosis. So that made me feel better knowing that, hey, as long as my ketones were high enough, I believe that my gl blood glucose will eventually go down because I have less of it around and my body, my body hopefully didn't need as much because it was now fat adapted enough to the point where it could actually use the ketones. Uh, although seeing that 49 was still scary and I still did go eat. However, I was right in the neighborhood of being in this therapeutic ketosis zone. And so that made me feel a little, little bit better. And so I went and ate and took care of everything. Then I, I reached out to a few other people and what I ended up learning was another study that was uh, based upon uh, an obese individual in the 1970s who went on a 382-day fast. He was under doctor's supervision, and he ended up losing a ton of weight. They ended up adding a multivitamin and potassium to the diet, and they were doing a whole bunch of tests. But what they realized is that over the course of time, his blood sugar levels got into the 30s and stayed there stable, and he never had any uh, forms of hypoglycemia, uh, hypoglycemia. And so obviously we can't base our lives upon this one obese man from the 1970s, but it went to show that certain people, when they are deep enough into a fast or deep enough into ketosis, because we have to assume he was burning his own body fat and his body was uh, generating ketones off of it 
and so he had a high level of ketones in his blood, we have to assume that that's how he stayed stayed alive and so stable. And it was a very successful study. We also do need to caution, though, that that study points out that other fasts uh, have not always been as successful. And so you kind of have to dig through like the uh, studies from the 60s and 70s. The point being, though, is that there are people out there that get along fine with the numbers that I've had, but they are under doctor's supervision, which I wasn't. And so at the end of the day, for me, I, I first things first, I need to go by how I feel. I felt great and everything. I know you're supposed to chase results, not chase ketones. But the fact of the matter is that for what I'm doing, I am kind of looking at numbers a lot. So uh, that was the first time I just ever seen anything so low. Now, I know that in the future for me, I think um, I'm not going to have as much terror if I ever see a number that low so long as my ketones are up. I believe that I won't be completely worried if my blood sugar, and this is for me only, I'm not going to be completely worried if my blood sugar dips below 60 as long as, if and only if, my ketones stay above 2.0. If I have both low ketones and low blood sugar, I'm going to hospital. And so that's that's where it's at. However, I've noticed for me at least an inverse proportion between my ketones going up and my blood sugar slowly trending down. I think we've seen that. Where I started this experiment, my blood sugar was almost pre-diabetic. You know, I was at 100 pretty uh, pretty frequently. That's no longer the case. So this has definitely helped with my blood sugar levels. I Obviously, this is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor and I cannot you know give you advice, but these are the risks I'm going to take. I mean, obviously, everything that we're doing here, everything that I'm doing here goes against the grain of the, the FDA and the CDC and all the other three-letter governmental agencies. Just the sheer fact that I'm kicking things like the food pyramid to the curb already mean that I'm in a little bit of an uncharted territory in terms of of my personal well-being because I'm kind of thumbing I'm kind of thumbing my nose at the FDA and their guidelines as it is so I really can't look to the traditional uh, advice when it comes to blood sugar because a lot of that advice doesn't pertain to people who are on a ketogenic diet whose bodies are fat adapted now where I would have been more concerned is if I was brand new to the keto diet and my, perhaps my body hadn't yet been you know, keto adapted. And perhaps if I had a genetic abnormality or an enzymatic problem and my mitochondria weren't able to use those ketones, then yeah, I would have been in grave danger. However, that was kind of a make it or break it moment for me in that I had no very little blood sugar around, but my body had plenty of ketones around and everything was functioning fine. So for me, I now know that I can work quite well in a deeper, more quote-unquote therapeutic state of ketosis. Now, moving forward, because I'm a very conservative person, uh, some of you may think otherwise after seeing a 49 blood sugar level, but I'm a conservative person, I'm going to try to keep things um, above 60, and I like to keep my ketones between 1.5 and 2.0. For me personally, I noticed that if my ketones are above 2.0, it means I think I'm over-starving myself a little bit, and I know that ketones are, are muscle sparing and everything, but I don't, um, I don't like skipping food that much. So that's where I'm going to, be, that's where I'm going to be starting my test. If I see ketones too high or blood sugar too low, then I'm going to go and eat. And that's, uh, that's where I'm going to be for now as a conservative person who doesn't have a, uh, you know, medical guidance here. However, it is good to see that there are doctors who have administered this this type of diet, and they have seen numbers that that were actually in the zone that I was at. So that makes me panic a little bit less. And there's also people who have gone on extended fast who have had way lower blood sugar levels, but they are also, again, under doctor's uh, supervision. And so you kind of, um, you have to have thick skin in a little bit. If if this kind of stuff scares you, then I the only advice I can give you is go see a doctor, do this under a doctor's care, and don't go as as hardcore as whatever I did that week. And so and so don't do as long of a fast. If you're not if you're not as confident in your own abilities, don't push it. We should not be chasing ketones, but I think this is a very important reason why we should be monitoring our blood, even though these test strips are expensive and the you know the costs do add up. It's important because we're doing things that are out of the realm of this, you know, this Western diet science that we've been accustomed to over the last hundred years. So kind of uh, flying blind in ways, but it's good to see that there are studies that have come out kind of showing these levels, albeit under doctor's supervision. So so from now on, I'm not going to panic as much, just as long as my ketones are high enough. Anyway, um, that's my story. That's how I'm going to handle it in the future. I hope everyone's uh, doing okay out there, but yeah, if you're not sure, get your ass to the hospital. Anyway, this is Mike with Price Paul. As always, got to show you what shirt I'm wearing, and today... 
Fate's Warning is the one. So that one, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, once again, see a doctor. Do this under a doctor's medical care. And this is not medical advice. This is my story and how I handled it and how I'm going to handle it. And I understand that by by disregarding much of the FDA's dietary advice, I put myself in a state of having to disregard other such advice, such as the you know the blood sugar numbers, just so long as I am in enough of a state of ketosis. If you can't handle that, then you need to see your doctor immediately, or you need to just go back to eating six to eleven servings of grains per day. This is Mike with Price Ball. Hope you're all doing well out there because I'm feeling great. Thanks.